Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel and today I'm at my mom's house and we're working on this mighty mule 500 single gate opener and what's happened is lightning run in on it so I don't know what all we're going to have to replace uh, we're going to get this box opened up and then I know we're going to replace the power supply. Before I get started, I want to let everybody know that I am not a professional gate installer. I don't work for this company. I'm a DIYer. I've installed this, and this is actually the second one we've put on here because the first one lasted about a month before it got hit by lightning. And when that got hit, it took the arm with it. So we went ahead and got a kit. Apparently, they don't make the 500 anymore. They went up to a 560. Right, but this kit is basically what you're going to buy if you're installing a gate. So it's going to come with a box, the arm, the power supply, the battery, bracketry, transmitter, instructions. I would definitely recommend, uh, if you've never installed one of these gates, to read this instruction. This is for the FM500 and the MM560. I don't know what the difference is. I'm thinking they should work. This gate... Uh, really didn't need this big arm on it. This arm's really for a huge gate. We could have got by with a 360, but since it was already set up for this, we went with it. To access this box, there's four Phillips head screws, one in each corner. And we're just going to take these out right here, and we'll get this cover off. Now with the cover off, you can see there's been spiders in here. I don't know what kind of creeper crawly, but that thing sure has made a very, very sticky nest. So uh, this one's got two batteries, and I'll check these batteries. Of course, we'll put the new battery in too, but I know we replace these batteries about every year or so. Uh, these batteries will go bad. I think this is actually from the last replacement when we replaced the whole thing and then this was a replacement battery I just added to it so uh, these batteries go bad these gates don't work even if you have a power supply so the power supply comes in here it comes in as DC charges the batteries the gate operates off the batteries as you can see there's no lights on this board there's no power because the um, transformer up there in the building is blown up now this section of wire right here is going to the arm of the gate. The red and the black goes to the gate arm motor. This is where we're going to check for resistance to see if that motor's any good. The rest of them are for limit switches inside, inside here that tells that arm where it's traveled to. So let's undo everything. It looks like this board's probably burnt. In my opinion, it probably is. Let's see if it'll... Uh, Let's just do some investigating. We'll unhook this power supply right here and we'll see what happens. So, inside that kit, you're going to, it's going to come with this little narrow screwdriver. Do not throw this screwdriver away. This is what you need to access these little terminals on the board. Right. Also on here, there's going to be a, a fuse this fuse right here, it's a 10, uh, 15, amp, 15 amp fuse. It appears to be okay. So we'll put that back on here. Now the reset button and off down here, we'll cut the power off and barely see that power in. When you turn that on, it should go beep, 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 and it tells you everything's good. It doesn't do anything, so we know that it's probably bad. The next thing we're going to do is unplug these batteries. I'm going to go ahead and unplug them from the battery, get the batteries out so that I can find the spider and kill the spider. Also, let's see. We will check the batteries and make sure they're good. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unhook uh, all these arms. Well, I'm pretty sure if nothing else this board's shot. Right. These are all color coded on the board you're going to see green, white, blue that's green, white, 
blue. All the, the colors are, are marked right here. You're just going to put which color the wire is into the right terminal. Brown, orange, red, and black. And the red and black ones are thicker wires, so they're a little bit more of a hassle to get in the terminals. All right, so these are going to be your motor, arm motor wires. Let's take a resistance reading on those two. I can't really see my meter. It's down lower, but I'll try to get you a shot of it. So it's basically 0.5 ohms. Right. Try to get them not touching anything else. So this is 3.6, three and a half ohms. Three and a half ohms. So that's 0.5 ohms, and this is three and a half ohms. So we know that that motor's burned up, and that arm will have to replace the arm. And that is the entire reason for getting the kit, because uh, you can replace one thing or another. You can replace a board, or you can replace an arm, but you can't replace both as cheap as you can buy a kit. All right. So I'm not even gonna worry about the power supply right now. We're going to go ahead and replace the circuit board and uh, everything that has to do with the circuit board uh, except for the switch. We'll check the switch, make sure the switch is good. Uh, we'll check and make sure the uh, sensor is good, this is the remote sensor. Well, actually. That's already on it. We're not going to even use this box here. We're going to go with the original box. So let's go on out here and uh, we'll go ahead and get the circuit board off. All right, so we got uh, a remote sensor comes in. It goes to these three wires here. And they're also color coded on here, green, black, and red. And then this plug underneath goes to a little speaker that's in the bottom, it's just a little teeny tiny speaker, it's just a beeper. So we'll unplug them two, we'll, un we'll loosen up and remove these three wires here. All right. All right. And that's all, that's all except for these two wires. We'll take these off, that goes to our switch right here. And the rest of this can come off together. Now there's four little clips that's holding the board on. We'll release these, just push down right side might be better with a bigger screwdriver flathead or really a, a uh, pair of pliers works a little better but we can get it without it you can actually probably get it with your fingers but it's easier with a screwdriver And well, that spider has been pretty prolific in here. All right, got the board out. Let me look on back the board. You can see, you can see some damage right here. It's burnt through right there. Now, I'm not a, a, a electronic person. So I'm not even going to attempt to replace this board. Somebody with experience and knowledge could probably fix it. But it looks like, you know, you can tell that that capacitor's smoked. I'm not fooling with it. These boards are, you know, a couple hundred bucks. You have to replace them. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and replace the circuit board. So I got to get the new circuit board out of the box. All right, so the new board is a red board. So let's look at the difference. There shouldn't be that much difference between the two. All right. 
you know, this is not set up for a second gate, so that looks fine. Control inputs all look the same. Everything looks pretty much identical. This one's version 3.0. That one's, I uh, mean, this one's, I guess, 1.8, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, that's basically the only thing I can see. Let's see if this one is PWB. 3040 and this one does not appear to have a number on it that I can see. Hmm. Alright, so let's swap them out. So I'm just going to stick that on. The bottom and the bottom and the top and the top. Boom, boom. We're going to hook our switches back up, one here, one here, so we're going to hook our sensor back up, a receiver, All right, and red's at the bottom, blue and then green. Uh, this board came pre-installed, so I ended up having to take it off, so these are already open for me. Should be able to slide it in. Right. We'll go ahead, we got we got to get our gate hickey out of here. So to do that, the dead long legs, I know that ain't what's down making that big nest. To do that, we really need to loosen that up a little bit right here. That's one of them probably mixing jumping spiders. They jump out at you and scare the crap. Alright, so we'll loosen this outside lug up. Here's the issue, this board's going to be in our way. I think I run into that issue before. I'm going to try, I should have I went ahead and changed this out first. That would have that made more sense. I'm going to try to get it out. And we've got to cut these snaps. So this is about as far as we can go with the board until we get our uh, arm replaced. We've got these arms. I've got one of these locks on here, one on each end. Of course, this other end's disconnected, so it won't be no problem. But when we go back with it, that arm's going to be retracted. So we can go ahead and hook it up, and then we'll set our gate open where it needs to be. So I've got to unlock that and take this arm off. I've got to get this tie wrap off. And we've got to snake the end of that wire back through that little hole right there. So, yeah. I may end up having to drop this plank down to access that. If I do, I'm going to have to go get my bit, my drill and all on it and bring it. All right, so I've got the new arm installed partially and we'll run our, our wire down. I also went ahead and took this board down just laid it on the box here to help, help us get this, get more, uh, uh, where you can get to that because you wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to get to it with that board in the way so we're gonna slide this nut over the wire here and we'll just push these wires through the hole actually let me see what I can do with this yeah you see what I'm dealing with here there's actually supposed to be a little gasket right there so Tiny tiny little hole. It's hard to get that stuff through there. It's a lot easier to take that off. Don't don't lose your little nut here. Though. Don't let it go too far away. You ain't gonna go that far with it. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna start working these in. And if I can, can see it. Yeah, this is, I think it's a boot. Whatever it is, it really don't mean nothing to us. Get them in and we can get one of these in and we'll get the other one in. Stick it on through. sewn through we can kind of put this nut loosely back on here 
and that ain't really, I don't, it does tighten down, so yes. Now we're going to stick this through, and we got to go through our plastic nut here. Damn it, sure would have been easier if I'd done that prior to the, uh, prior to putting that board in. Going here and get it up. All right, now we just need it up here on this section right here, so probably we don't need that much. I'm gonna leave this nut loose until I get it all installed right here. Looks pretty good there. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this nut. I'm gonna try to tighten this inner nut too. It ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna just take this access. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put go ahead and put this board back up here. Alright, so that's gonna get now I went up to the building while I go off camera and uh took these two wires on the transformer and I tied them together. I took them off the transformer, tied them together so that we can check our continuity to the build and make sure we ain't got it open on a, uh, you know, going to the building. So, so I can see that. Got about three. Get on the right one here. Got about three, less than three ohms resistance. So at least we don't have an open circuit. We know we're good. All right, I'm on. I'm on test these batteries. And this is the last one we replaced right here. So we'll make sure we get on DC. Let's see. Do I have DC on here? DC. We want to see a voltage of around 12 volts. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. All right, 13 volts. Almost right at 13 volts on that one. We're gonna call that a pretty good one. And I think this one is an older one. Well, actually, this one might be. No, this is a GTO battery, so it's an old one. Let's see what this is showing. That is showing about 12.92. So, well. As long as it's working, we'll put it on there. And I'll save the, the other battery if we need one down there. Barn. I've got the power hooked up. It don't matter which terminal you go in. As long as they're not touching, you don't want any stray wires touching in there. I'm going to go and get the transformer plugged in. And then we'll come back and hook the batteries up. Alright, so we've got the power uh, plugged in up there. Now we can go ahead and, and get our batteries hooked up replace these batteries every two years it says so this battery probably could go ahead and be replaced but had voltages still appear to be good so we get this problem we got a spare there. and our charge lights blinking Now you don't have to have two batteries 
if you're going to if you have a solar installation you need two batteries but with a electric power coming in you can get by with one battery but we went ahead and changed this battery out this battery was still good when we did it so we just left it in here all right so now we should be able to turn this on we should hear three beeps these dip switches and let you know you can follow your directions usually just leave them at the factory settings Three beeps. Now let's set our personal transmitter code. And inside these, you get these little, these little transmitters. You need to open them up. I think it's just really these two screws on each side. Inside here, you're going to find some dip switches. You can set these any position you want, but I would definitely recommend changing it from the factory setting. All right, just, and if you get another one of these, all you got to do is set them to the same dip switch setting as this one. It'll work just fine. So what we're going to do, we've done all that. We're going to hit learn remote, which would be right here. Press and hold it to the alarm sounds. Then we're going to, let's see, we're going to press our button and press and hold that to alarm sounds. All right, so we're going to press this, press that. All right. That was quick. All right, now we're going to do our opening setting. And this is where it gets kind of tricky because you don't want it to go too far when it when it closes. It's open right. It's open right now. So here we can see. So this button right here is your learn master limit button. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn the power on. We're going to let's see. We're going to open it up. Oh, we're going to we're going to use our switch and, until it gets here. We're going to close it and then we're going to push and hold our master for five seconds. So all right, all right so that's all the way open. Going close. But when it gets up here pretty close to this post, I'm gonna hit it again, make it stop. Right there. Alright, I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna push in. And push and hold this till it beeps. All right. All right, we'll open it up. It's coming open. And as it gets towards the fully open position, it should start slowing down. Oh well, it, that's far it opens it's going to go, so it really don't matter. But let's go ahead and give it a close shot, make sure it's going to stop where we want to stop right here. We want it to be right up against this. If it's not, we can, re we can do it again. So it starts slowing down, go to a soft close. didn't quite get all the way but that's fine that's, I mean that's a dog a dog could push through that but we don't really want to get it all the way up on this either so I think that'll be all right well, all right that should have us going here and all we got to do now is put our cover back on here and call it fixed so hope this helps you out thanks for watching please rate comment subscribe and